Welcome back, guys, to Phoenix Wright Spirit of Justice, where last episode we found ourselves a new claim that Petro was the thief, coming to our answer via the wrong working and a true example of why in a math problem teachers do get you to show you're working at all times. I thought that Andy Standin was carrying the treasure box, the glow in the dark box, to find his way to commit the crime. However, it turns out the patrol was the thief himself carrying the box and lighting himself up like a beacon of violence ready to be perpetrated on his head. I hope you're prepared to back up your claims, says the judge. So we're going to get straight to that. Uh, of course, your majesty. Oh, really? In that case, can we assume you have proof? Oh, uh, proof, huh? Do I have any proof? But I can't back down now. It's the Phoenix way. Bluff our way. Yes, I have proof in my dreams. The proof that Mr. Roll was the thief may have been left behind on a certain piece of evidence. Uh, very well. Let's see your evidence and be ready to stand behind it. Footprints. Fingerprints. I'll take anything at this point. I need proof. Something that would have been involved with the theft. And that might still have some trace evidence left on it. So if he was carrying the treasure box and lighting himself up, fingerprints are what we're after, right? What proof do you have that the victim might have been the thief? It's got to be that itself. Except that I can't actually present the actual treasure box. The defense would like to examine the treasure box. There might be trace evidence on it that would show that the victim had held it. Might? You'd better hope you turn up something more definitive than that defense. Yes, sir. Your Majesty. Very well. Bailiff, bring the treasure box. I thought this was something that wasn't really allowed to be seen. I guess without what's inside it, it's kind of useless either way, right? And there you are, defense. You're free to examine it. If I don't find something now, my entire argument up to this point will be blown. Plus, there's that little matter of the old tongue shears. I have to find something. I just have to. Right, it's time to examine, is it? Now to make sure I remember how to do this. Do I? Do I? Always the question. I can rotate the evidence by sliding the touch screen. I can zoom in and out with a slider on the left too to get a better look. I'm pretty sure I can use directional buttons as well for that, shouldn't I? And if I ever get to turn around, I can always touch reset to return things to this initial state. I'd better search every inch of this box carefully and touch anything of interest to check it out in detail. Right then, so... Well, I touched it. No particular interest here. Guess I'll check out another spot. I just wanted to swoop around a little bit, to be honest. Well, there's a bit to examine right there and then. Hmm. The lid of the box was forced open. But while the victim was holding the box, the lid must have been closed. I'll try closing the lid too. That didn't look forced. Hey! W what? Son of a- You locked it! So? What's the big deal? I thought you can open it with that key you're wearing. Y yeah, I can. No sweat. Then why is there a bucket load dripping off of you over there? I think I'd like to open this box back up again. Could you lend me your Magatama key? Sure. Okay, let's see. Where's the keyhole? Well, it's the Magatama key. So wouldn't it go in the hole about the Magatama mark? Huh. It won't open. <laughs> Would you look at that? The feet must have busted the lock when they forced the box open. Really? Because I'm not so sure about that. The treasure box has now been updated in our court record. In any case, I'd better take another good look. I have to find proof that the victim was holding this box. Right, well, let's keep looking around. I guess examining the lock would be fine. Except, though, that's probably what we just talked about. This is the lock. It was forced open. I don't really see anything else to know about it. I say it looks incredibly not forced open, to personally. All right, that! That's what we're looking for, isn't it? That is a handprint. Th this 
blood stain. It shows the outline of a hand. Could this be what I've been looking for? Your Majesty, take a look at this. There's a blood stain here that outlines the shape of a hand. Really? Let me see that. Oh my, you're right. Now I'm getting somewhere. I believe the blood stain is an outline of the victim's hand as he was holding the box. Wh what? Even as he was being struck, he held on tight to the precious treasure box. After all, he'd gone through a lot of trouble to steal it. The blood from his head wound splattered across his hand and onto the box. Objection. Your Majesty, don't let yourself be taken in. It's just more of his loyally deceit. What do you mean? <laughs> Mr. Wright, where is your proof that the outline is that of the victim's hand? What? I should have seen this coming. I have a show proof for prepared to meet the shears. Or you could save us all some time and bite your tongue out now and submit it instead. That I did not see coming. He really wants to be dead. Well, defense, how about it? Do you have proof that the outline is on the victim's hand? Where would the proof of something like that even be? Please submit your evidence at this time. So we need to present a victim's hand, essentially, then. And we are presenting evidence. Okay, what evidence shows that the outline on the treasure box is that of the victim's hand? Well, the only thing I have of the victim is this picture here. He's got a bloody hand. Is that the answer? Simply put. Take that! I've got it. This is the evidence that's going to save my beloved tongue. Mr. Payne, despite your claims about my forked tongue, it just so happens I have the proof you require. You do? It's right here in this crime photo. It is? Where? The fence, please point it out. What proves the bloodstained outline on the box is that of the victim's hand, you ask? Oh, oh he's wearing gloves though, so there's going to be no fingerprints. But it's just his hand. So we had lost blood in the hand, that would be the shape of the handprint. Plus you could just test the size versus the hand as well, surely? Take that! Of course we're not going to mess around with a corpse in court. Mr. Payne, take a good look at the victim's hand. See this? That's blood. What? If we place Mr. Roll's hand inside the bloody outline, you think the blood on his hand would complete the spatter? Exactly. Here goes nothing. And if they do form one complete splatter, it would prove my theory correct. And then, and then, the victim really was holding the box? I'm willing to bet my life on it. The defense reasserts that the victim was the thief who stole the treasure box. Y you can't be serious! You don't want to exterminate me this time then? I protest! There's... there's no way they would ever match up! I assert that it's patently impossible for... Now! Talk about tongue karma. Sounds like it just bit his. What's the matter, Mr. Payne? Did your forked tongue get tangled up in there? Or were you trying to submit your own tongue to the court? What are you... Well, at least the crowd's turning. I can hardly believe it. Apparently not everything out of the defense's mouth is a bluff. Of course not, your majesty. This tongue doesn't lie. And I'd like to continue to use my tongue in the future too, if you wouldn't mind. He never has to know it really was a bluff. No, not Mr. Roll. I can't believe it. I'm sorry, Albie. I know it's upsetting news. He must have needed the money badly, probably to support his family. After all, he even gave up his dream of becoming a monk to help them. Oh, so that thing Mr. Roll would say to me. Albi, you train hard and make sure you become a monk one day. Don't end up like me, he'd say. Yeah, 
He was probably warning you not to end up a thief. Mr. Roll! But now, wait just one minute. If the victim was a thief and he was holding the treasure box, then that means Mr. Roll was holding the murder weapon when he was killed. Uh, oh, that's a very good point. It doesn't make much sense, does it? If the victim was holding the treasure box, it couldn't have been the murder weapon. Which means the real murder weapon must have been something else. A real murder weapon? What's something else? The blood was thought to have gotten on the box when the box was used as a weapon. But it turns out that wasn't the case. The blood splattered onto the treasure box the victim was holding. When he was struck with the real weapon, that's what really happened. Isn't that right, Mr. Andy Standin? Are you insinuating I'm the one who used this real weapon? Are you saying I'm wrong in my understanding? <laughs> you got me riled up, lawyer man. I feel a song coming on. Looking for a weapon that just don't exist. Pathetic lawyer man, drop into the abyss. Despicable lawyer man, yo, you make me sick. You can disappear just like a magic trick. What is this, new death metal? Ruthless lawyer man, done it by a weapon for you, miserable wretch. Hell, doth be beckon. Doth be beckon, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know I don't need to remind you, defense. That your life is on the line. I know you, Magistry. Yet you're prepared to risk it on this mere idea of a real murder weapon? DEATH TO THE LAWYER! Okay then, lovely guy. This is it, the moment of truth. I can't back down, not now! Yes, your majesty, I am. I'm confident the real murder weapon does indeed exist. That's a bold claim, Mr. Wright. Now let's see you back it up. Show us which piece of evidence points to this real murder weapon. Gladly. If I knew which one it was, what would somebody like understanding use to bludgeon someone? Now then, defense, please submit your evidence to the court. <laughs> yeah, a sea lawyer, man. Let's see this thing that shows real murder weapon you say I used. Right, my death metal voice man. Well, what would understanding carry with him that he said was with him at the time to possibly bludgeon someone to death? It's gotta be... Well, he's holding it. There might be a second one to be fair. I'm just wondering exactly what shows that or what evidence I could present for that. Or more to the point, actually clicking on this photo reveals the fact that in the small screen the design of the guitar is completely different to what he's currently using. Okay, that is proof in itself. Take that! It's gotta be that, because it just represents the Darmalan. What I'm about to present is really nothing more than a possibility, but this thin thread is all I got. Allow me to direct the court's attention to this photo of the Morning Dancer Devotion. That photo, how is that going to help you, Mr. Wright? There's something about it that doesn't sit right with me. Oh yeah? What's this something? Hmm. This thing here is odd, to say the least. A flying V. Is that what you're using now? Mr. Understanding. Why is the instrument you're holding different from the one you're playing in the photo? Oh, would you look at that? They're completely different shapes. I believe you said your Darmalan was your one and only. Well, Mr. Understanding, what do you have to say to that? <laughs> I have nothing to say. Then allow me to answer for you. They're different because the one in the photo is no longer in playable condition. <laughs> hmm. 
Not after you used it to bludgeon Mr. Roll to death. And that would be quite thick too. <laughs> My old partner wasn't doing so hard, so I brought a sister along, that's all. Not a big deal, lawyer man. In that case, please submit your old Dermalon to this court as evidence. Too bad. You're too late. I got rid of her yesterday. You what? Burn her up with the rest of the trash. That's just to ashes, baby. <laughs> no! He's already destroyed the evidence? And I see more trash right here in this court that needs to burn in the fires of hell. Lawyer trash! <laughs> ah! Now there's no proof to show! Oh, come on. That was pathetic. Your agony can sound better than that. What is that great scream of yours? This... This can't be how it ends. After all you've been through, too. I think I've heard enough. It seems the defense is unable to produce the evidence it needs to prove its assertion. But... But, Your Majesty, that's only because the witness destroyed it. Evidence is everything in court. And don't tell me you've forgotten this most fundamental principle of our profession. Without sufficient proof, your claim that misunderstanding is the murder is no more than conjecture. Ah! <laughs> There's the pained expression I've been looking for. By the way, there seems to be one more thing you're forgetting. Was it now? You accuse Mr. Understanding of being the thief, but the real thief turned out to be the victim. Oh. And with that, Mr. Understanding's purported motive for murder goes out the window. Ah! Great point, Prosecutor. You tell him. If I had been there, I would have just collared roll and gotten the treasure back. There wasn't any reason for me to kill him now. Was there? I... There's no good counter-argument to that. It sounds to me like Mr. Understanding has been completely wrongfully accused. Unfortunate as it may be, I think it's time to hand down the verdict in this case. Not good, not good. Defense, I trust you understand what you yourself will receive for taking on this case. Just in case we didn't know. Annihilation, some more extermination. Ah, what do I do? The murder weapon's been destroyed, and now I've got no motive. Poor Albie will be convicted, and I'll lose my life too. Mr. Wright, you've wasted this course time and disparaged everything we hold sacred. We should charge with his majesty, in addition to the crime of abetting the accused. Yeah. You should pay for desecrating my good name. Bye bye, lawyer man. Time for you to do some repentant in the Twilight Realm. This guy is guilty of sin. I just know it. He must have had some reason to kill Mr. Roll. But what? Come on, people. Let me hear you scream and shout. Time to take this lawyer trash out! Exterminate! Annihilate! Exterminate! Annihilate! This gallery, they're nuts. The thing to do at a time like this is to turn my thinking around. I shouldn't be trying to figure out what understanding his motive was. I should be thinking about what kind of situation would give him a motive. Did you steal it? He said. We know that Mr. Roll was the thief and that he had gone his hands on the box. So then why? Why in the world did he ask Albie that question? Because maybe he wasn't the thief? Maybe he just found out that it was gone. What about the treasure box would have prompted him to... Ha! Ah! Defense, a lot has gotten into you. Now I get it. Now it all makes sense. 
like Pearl Conquer, man. What you trying to say? Mother and squeeze yourself. Sounds like you knocked something loose upstairs. Your Majesty. Please hold off on your ruling for just a while longer. Now don't tell me you're going to start begging for your life now. No, Your Majesty. That's not it. It's just that I realized something important. We've been operating under a serious misconception this whole time. A misconception, you say? That's right. A mistaken notion about the treasure box. But could this really be true? If so, there's still a lot to figure out. Very well, let's hear what you have to say. Thank you, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, this is just more of his nonsense. He's just stalling for time. This is your last chance defense. The second I find it really is nothing but nonsense. No amount of begging will stay my hand, understand? Yes, Your Majesty. <clears throat> we all know this is just going to be another one of your stupid bluffs. Now then, defense. What is this misconception you mentioned? The thing we didn't realize about the treasure box was that it wouldn't open, it was gone, it was empty. Something that can be found out by someone who probably guards it all the time. Probably giving it a little bit of a rattle. That's what I'd say. What if the treasure box was already empty from the start? What? What? Please recall that when Mr. Roll ran into Albie on the Great Stairs, he asked the boy a question. Did you steal it? He said. Also recall that Mr. Roll was holding the treasure box at the time. So why then did he ask Albie the question that he did? Now that is a bit peculiar, isn't it? Not at all, Your Majesty. Not once you realise that... By the time Mr. Roll got to the treasure room, the treasure box was already empty. I beg your pardon? Mr. Roll suspected that Albie had gone to it first, which is why he confronted Albie when he ran into the boy on the stairs. Yes. He was still a thief, though. I'm just trying to paint him innocent now. But how would the victim have known the treasure box was empty? He didn't have any way of opening it. Objection. Once a year, the victim had the duty of carrying the treasure box to the palace. He was so proud when he was put in charge of guarding the treasure box. He even got to carry the box to the palace for the New Year's Rite. He would have been able to tell by the weight when he lifted it that the box was empty. Ah, oh, I see. Yes, I suppose he would have been able to tell, wouldn't he? Mr. Roll most likely decided to at least steal the empty box. It's an important historical artifact in and of itself, after all. Ah! But what's your point, Mr. Wright? What does any of this have to do with Mr. Understanding? My point is this. It gave Mr. Understanding a motive to murder the victim. A motive? Mr. Understanding, keeping the treasure safe is one of your duties, isn't it? So if anyone had found out that the treasure was missing, you would have been accused of incompetence. From the moment Mr. Roll discovered that the treasure was gone, his fate was sealed. Because you decided then that he had to be silenced forever. But that's absurd! <laughs> Can you believe the stuff that comes out of this guy's mouth? This is all just a colossal joke. And so then, what really happened to the treasure? It had been stolen long before this incident occurred. By Mr. Peace loving and understanding himself. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to accuse Mr. Understanding? Your Majesty, please don't listen to these trumped up charges. The defense is grasping. Objection! The treasure box can only be opened with the key Mr. Understanding holds. Who else could have stolen the treasure? Objection! As I said, the accused stole the treasure by forcing open the box. Your Majesty, I call for a swift ruling. 
I'm not ready to give my verdict yet. What? A defense has successfully presented a new possibility in this case. Yes, finally. A tiny shred of hope. Misunderstanding. Would you care to make any statements in response to the defense's claims? Great response. This is all bull! My nog is a rage cage, it's ready to explode, baby! Instruct understanding, please calm yourself. I'm not gonna take it. No, I ain't gonna take it. I dutifully watched over that treasure with pride. And now I'm getting accused of stealing it. This lawyer is a lie, scumbag! Uh, you better believe I got something to say. Open up your ear hole, sheeple. Let's rock. Death to the lion lawyer. It's a beautiful guy. Friendly, friendly. As it seems, we're getting ourselves another witness testimony. This case keeps on continuing. Steal the Founder's Orb! Me! I did it! This is- I don't know how this is gonna- this is gonna rhyme, is it? This line lawyer's insults! No, no limit! All this time, I guarded you faithfully! Sacred duty to the Holy Mother! Easy to see! Hands out clean, the accused did the deed! Force the box open, no key did he need! Lying lawyer, condemn him to hell. Cook him, throw him into a prison cell. That's, a, that's definitely not how all deaf metal singers sound, but whatever. All right, we now heard from both sides. Either the treasure box was forced open by the accused, as the witness claims, or Mr. Understanding opened it, as the defense claims. Defense. This is your last chance to cross-examine the witness. Yes, your majesty. If you are unable to prove your assertions by the end of this cross-examination... Then the DC Act will come into play and both you and the accused will lose your lives. I understand. Life or death. It all comes down to this. Mr. Wright. Don't worry, Albie. I'm here to defend you. I promise. It'll be all right. Thank you. I believe in you, Mr. Wright. I know you can win this for us. And after we win, we can go see Miss Maya. Together. It's a deal. I can't let Albie down. I have to win this trial. Somehow I have to prove that only understanding could have stolen the treasure. To your worst lawyer trash. This is your requiem. My requiem. The last song you'll ever hear on this mortal coil. So begins our cross-examination of the lying lawyer. Next time of Phoenix Wright, Spirit of Justice. Can we save Albie? Can I save me? And can I prove that he's not so peace-loving after all? I'll see you next time for more. Bye-bye.